All right, in this video, I'm gonna talk about green flags and why you shouldn't date anybody that doesn't have these green flags at minimum. Now, why is this important? Because it's easy to say what not to have, right? It's easy to like look at what you don't like in your life and say, yeah, I just don't like this happening. In fact, most people live their lives this way. They try to move away from what they don't want. But what I find is more powerful is instead of being pushed by the pain of the past of what you don't want, it's better to have a greater future that you're trying to strive for. And when you do that, you have a target for which you can go towards. So when you're meeting a woman and she has one of these green flags, okay, that's it. That's the thing I need to go towards. And then you can see it explicitly and then you can go towards that. And then whatever it is you did or attracted or whatever kind of behaviors you were doing in order to get that into your life, you can now start to recreate that in the future. So again, in this video, we're gonna talk about the green flags a woman should have. If she doesn't have these green flags, you should be suspect that it's gonna work out long-term for you. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betrayed to Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. The first green flag you should look for is she communicates openly and honestly with vulnerability. Now the second part that's key is vulnerability. You know, it really sucks being in kind of a relationship where you're always confused about where this person stands and they clam up on you. And I know you watching this, you probably said something or you try to like correct a behavior with a woman, she completely shuts down and you're like, hey baby, what's wrong? She's like, nothing. And so you're like, and you try to dig in, you try to get dig in, and she's like, well, you wouldn't understand. And she just shuts down and stonewalls the conversation. You can kind of feel from her that, hey, I, I think I'm supposed to kind of dig into this and kind of break her open, but at the same time, you shouldn't have to. The problem with a lot of relationships are is one person, the other person doesn't want to express vulnerably. They're afraid that if they express how they are, they're not going to be accepted. This is a big key in your relationship. If you're with somebody who can express vulnerably, in other words, she has an issue and she says, hey, by the way, this thing happened and this is how it's affecting me and I just want you to know. It's not some sort of a tit for tat or some sort of a punishment or silent treatment or a snide comment or something like this and then you have to break this person open in order to get them to communicate. And oftentimes what'll happen is, is a woman with a red flag, she'll shut this down and then you'll move on. And then it's like, okay, did we ever address the thing? Is this ever gonna be something that we talk about? And then it keeps coming up over and over and over again and she never talks about it. And then eventually you'll just say like, fuck it, what's the point? When I was with my ex-wife, is I'd bring up a conversation or bring up something and she would start just deflecting and then start criticizing me. Or if I started honing on on the real issue, she'd just clam up and say, you're just weird. And she just kind of shut it down. And so I was dealing with somebody who's a piss poor communicator. And it made sense because in her past, in her life, her parents never talked about issues. They just swept everything under the rug. So of course she's gonna do that with me. And me not understanding how relationship worked back then, I didn't understand how to like dig into that and break her open. And when I started to understand and try to dig open, she would stonewall. And so I got with somebody who had this major red flag, yet I could not see it because nobody told me that this is not appropriate behavior. And I didn't have the tools with which to deal with it. And so really I should not have been with this person to begin with because of the communication issues. And this can be such a big detriment in your relationship that if this is not happening, then there's almost no point because you're not relating, right? Relationship is about relating. And if you can't relate to each other, you don't really have a relationship. The second green flag is there's no drama. She's not trying to cross your boundaries. There's not all kinds of stuff happening in her life. She's not gossiping. She's not creating a bunch of stuff. And guys will say, well, all women have a little bit of crazy. And I would say women who have a hard time regulating their emotional state have problems. And so when you have somebody who is always having problems in her life, it always ends up seeping into you and your life. In other words, if I'm gonna date a woman and she has children and she doesn't get along well with her ex-husband, then those problems end up becoming my problems. Why? Because at very minimum, she's gonna start complaining about that guy to me. And then her kids will come over to the house and then all the problems that the kids have start happening there. Or maybe this guy gets pissed off and now I have to deal with him directly. And so the problems that your woman have are gonna become your problems. And so when you evaluate this woman, you have to be really clear, is this something that I'm okay with having in my life? Now I'm not saying you should take it on, you shouldn't take on her problems. But on some level, you're gonna be taking them on. Right, you at least have to deal with it, hear about it, and so you want to be in a situation where you're with somebody who has the minimal drama possible. This is why when we talk about she has a good relationship with her parents, She's really good with children. She treats the waiter right. She knows how to self-regulate. She can open, communicate openly, honestly, vulnerable like that with you. Then you can have this kind of a good relationship because if you have a relationship with a woman who has all this drama, then your relationship gets to be defined by her drama and then before you know it, everything's about her and her drama. 
Now, the third one is you want to have a woman who has a strong sense of self. Now, you want a woman who has a strong sense of self in relation to her being led by you. And a lot of women, they get afraid if they're with a strong guy who can really lead and is dominant in his position in his life. And I'm not saying he is dominating or domineering, but he's dominant in the way that he presents himself in, in his life. In other words, he knows how he's going to live his life and he knows who he is. If she doesn't have a strong sense of self, she has a tendency to get steamrolled by him. In other words, she's going to be very agreeable. Okay, yeah, well, we'll just do whatever you want. We'll just do whatever you want. And she'll lose herself in you. And while that might be fine for you, at some point, you'll start disrespecting her. You'll think, well, her opinion doesn't matter that much because she's not speaking up for herself. She's not having a strong sense of who she is and she'll just follow in with you. And while you will have maybe 10, 20, 15 years of peace, at some point, that switch is going to flip in her head and she's going to say, hey, you know what? I matter too and I got shit that I want to do. My life revolves completely around him. I've completely co codependent myself on this guy. And so you want a woman who has a strong sense of self because you want her to have her own life. Like a woman who loves you typically wants around you around all the time. She wants all your time and attention. While that is great and all, a woman who is too much into that will lose herself in the relationship. And then later on, if something goes south, she's just going to blame you for everything because she's put all of it on you. And so if you're in a situation where she's blaming you for everything, just realize she didn't have a strong sense of self and she's put all of her agency, all of her happiness on your shoulders and on some level, you let it happen. I think probably the biggest green flag is number four, which is she shows kindness and compassion. I mean, I'm dealing with the betrayal space mainly. I'm dealing with guys who've been cheated on from broken to badass.com. We do that. That's mainly what we deal with. Guys getting into their power and learning how to be like a soul seducer, how to seduce a woman from her soul, like breaking through all her bullshit and get to the woman underneath. If you're dealing with somebody who doesn't have a lot of compassion and kindness, then what ends up happening is she'll start blaming you for more and more things in your life. And for the guy, he's like, well, I'm giving everything I can to this woman and it's not enough. But if you're with a woman who prioritizes kindness and compassion, she's going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Or if you are having a hard time, she's going to, you know, deal with that in a way that's kind. He's just having a bad day. I know he loves me. It's not that big a deal. And then when you do mess up or you try to do something different, she's going to be encouraging. She's not going to do things to hurt you, like cheat on you or berate you or just be downright, downright mean. Plus, if you have a relationship with this woman where you're, where you're having kids, you want somebody who has this because this means her maternal instinct is going to be much stronger. And from this place, she's going to raise healthy and stable children. And so having a woman who is kind and compassionate does a lot for you as a man when you're trying to go out and build big shit. Green flag number five is she supports your hopes and dreams and things aren't a competition with you. In other words, when you're building big shit in the world, you want to be able to go do that thing. But if you're with somebody who's insecure, she's gonna say that thing is taking away from time with you. And so she's gonna say, I feel insecure. I feel like I'm competing with this guy's future or his business or something. Everything else is more important than me. And so she'll be very insecure. And so you want a woman who's solid in who she is and sees that you have all these dreams and hopes and that you're going towards it. In fact, a woman who's healthy and secure in herself will be turned on by this. She wants to see this ambition. She wants this let's fucking go attitude and you go after what it is you want and actually win and crush it. So you want somebody who encourages this. You want her to be your biggest cheerleader. If she's competing with you and she tells you, you tell her this cool stuff you're doing, she's like, yeah, whatever. Or she tries to tell you, diminish it or falling apart by going like, ah, he's doing all this good stuff and I'm not doing anything. I must be worthless. And she talks down on herself, just realize that this is going to get worse. And so in all of these things that I'm talking about here, if they present themselves early on in a relationship, like early on the first, second, third date, or maybe the first couple of months, just realize that in this space where she's trying to be the best version of she can of herself to attract you, this means that this is the most tamped down it'll ever be. And so when you notice these things early on, you want to address them early on by most likely removing yourself from the situation. You want to be with somebody who can match you well at the level that you're at. And so you want somebody who's going to support your hopes and dreams, just like you would support her hopes and dreams too, and not get into competition with you over what you're doing with your time. You want somebody who has a positive outlook in life. In other words, she's an optimist. She's thinking about the benefit, the hopes. What can possibly happen? What's possible for a future? If you're with somebody who's like a Debbie Downer all the time and she's just like, well, you know, and she's sarcastic about things and she's complaining about her day and everything, this is going to sap your energy to move forward to be a producer. 
You were trying to go out there and do big shit, like start a business. Can you go home to this, this negativity? Like what goes in your mind comes out. You know, the things that you associate with, the people you associate with become how you operate. And so you wanna be around people who are positive and hardworking and doing all the good things that you, are, you wanna do. And so when you're with somebody who's like this, and this person's closer to you than anybody else in your life, and they're down on themselves, and you're there having all these problems and drama and all this happening, all this bandwidth in your mind's going towards her. This is a bandwidth of, of an energy of trying to fix a situation versus an energy of let's synergize and move forward together more powerfully than we could in our own. And when you're with somebody who's like that, you can go way further. Most guys have never had a relationship where they with a woman who really supports them well and contributes more to his freedom than if he was single. Now a lot of women will complain like guys don't want commitment, but I have yet to find a guy who has a problem committing to a woman who brands him more freedom than if he was alone and single. Being objective and non-reactive. Now this goes in with the first green flag where she can communicate and be vulnerable and be open, right? So when she sees something happening, she just doesn't fly off the fucking handle and freak out and start calling you names and doing all this stuff. No, she can stop, she can see what's going on inside, check in within, and then actually respond in a healthy manner instead of just reacting and being completely emotionally dysregulated and out of control. Oh, you looked at that woman at the gym, you must be fucking her. It's like, no, hold on a minute. You know, I'm just looking at shit. And if a good looking woman walks by, your eye can catch it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it registered in my head that I said, oh, that's a good looking woman. It might've just looking at shit, right? Just like you're walking down the street, you see a car go by and you look at it and then she'll ask me, would you see that car? Like, I didn't, I didn't notice the car. She's like, you look right at it. Like, yeah, well, I didn't see it. And this happens a lot. Being able to just respond to something instead of just flying off the handle and being reactionary and just coming to conclusions and then just, jumping down the guy's throat is absolutely key. And a lot of women think, well, I'm just being myself. I should be able to express myself. It's like, you're not just expressing yourself, you're being an asshole. And you're dumping your garbage on somebody else, hoping that they'll clean it up for you and then sort it for you and put it in a recycling bin. That's not your job. Your job is to come to approach your partner with love and understanding and say, hey, this is what's going on with me. Let's have a discussion about it like freaking adults. When you have somebody who's like, well, I'm just being myself and I need to express who I am. It's like, yes, but you can express yourself in a healthy manner, not in a manner that's just like dumping shit on everybody, and verbal diarrhea. The woman who can be vulnerable and open and just respond instead of just reactionary is highly valuable to a guy, mainly because there's not a lot of women who are willing to do this. And so by contrast of the other women, she'll stand out. This green flag is she values quality time with you. And for guys, if the woman wants to be with him, she's going to want to spend a lot of time with him. And so this is not necessarily a red flag, green flag, but it's, it's a gauge of her interest level in you. If you're pulling on her all the time for time and attention, you could push her away potentially. And generally that's the case. I usually tell guys, let her come to you in her own time. And when you do this, she will want to be with you. If a woman is in love with you and she values you, she's gonna to wanna to spend all her time and attention with you if she can. Until of course she's like, well, I need to go hang out with other people. But generally speaking, she's not gonna get tired of you. And so when she doesn't really wanna come spend time with you, she'd, she'd rather do things, go out with her friends or go to class or go find a new job. And she's just like, well, I'm trying to focus on my career right now. Just what she's telling you is like, I don't wanna hang out with you. And so the green flag is she's going to want to and try to initiate a lot of time with you. She's gonna to wanna to follow you around, go to where you're going, meet your friends, meet your family. She wants to be part of what you're creating. And the best way to do that is to be there with you. And she likes your time and attention. And so the best green flag obviously for this is she wants to spend quality time with you. This is kind of an obvious one, but she has a healthy relationship with her family and her friends. In other words, she has a no drama life. She doesn't have people that are always in problems or trying to drag her into her problems or she's gossiping and like, oh, this is what's going on with Stacy and holy crap. And then she's going and hanging out with Stacy and trying to help out with her boyfriend. And so having somebody in your life who gets along well with people, gets along well with her family, gets along well with her siblings and her friends, and chooses friends that aren't huge drama sinks. All kinds of people have some sort of drama, but if she's getting roped into all this stuff all the time, just realize that this is how she operates all the time. And a lot of guys go by what the woman says and doesn't watch how she actually operates. Engage her based on how she actually operates. So watch her. Watch how she acts with her family versus what she says about her family. Look at how she interacts with her friends versus what she says about her friends. Look at how she interacts with you versus what she says she does with you. So you watch what she does. Like when I was dating between my ex-wife and my new wife, I would notice that a lot of women would call themselves spiritual. She's like, I'm so spiritual, I'm spiritual. And I said, okay, cool. 
Awesome. I like this. You're spiritual. So what do you do if that's spiritual? She's like, well, you know, I, I do a lot of spiritual things, try to keep a positive mindset. And I look at what she's doing on her phone. All she's doing is just like thumbs upping inspirational quotes. Like, she's like, I buy chakra crystals and incense. And I, that's not fucking spiritual. Dawns this whole facade because she likes the idea of it but she's not actually embodying it. Versus my wife, when I said, well, you're spiritual, what are you into? She's like, I do meditation. Okay, cool, you meditate. What kind of meditation? She's like, I went to a 10-day Vipassana retreat. And I'm like, what's that? She's like, yeah, it's 10 days where we sit in silence for about eight to 10 hours a day. And I'm like, holy fuck, that's what I'm talking about. There you're putting your money where your mouth is. That is somebody who takes that shit seriously versus somebody who's just like, I just like these quotes over here. Like, that is not a spirit. So look at what she does, not what she says. And this is how it works in her relationship with her family and friends and you. And the last one is she has similar life goals and values as you. You're trying to build a big business and she has an OnlyFans account. That shit ain't going to work unless you want to be the guy filming it. That's ridiculous. So like, how are you going to go and build a family when you have an OnlyFans girl? It ain't gonna happen. And so when you're dating somebody, don't say, well, I get along with her well, I, we can make this work. No, you can't. Like all the things that are small in the beginning when you're really into each other at the, home, at the honeymoon phase, those little things get magnified because you don't have the honeymoon phase to try to like sh overshadow it and cloud your judgment. And so when you're looking at this, you don't wanna lose your head when you're with her. When you're dating a new woman, don't lose your fucking head and realize that the woman in front of you is the one you got. Don't try to turn her into something else. Don't try to be like, well, I hope she's going to be different. I hope she'll start to value what I value. I hope she'll one day be nurturing and caring. I hope one day she'll get behind me with my goals and stuff. No, she won't. She's not going to do it. And you, in fact, trying to hope that she'll be different means that you don't accept her as she is. So there's a level of judgment there. And so when you get mad at her for not supporting your dreams, just realize that you're getting what you're given. Because you got with somebody who doesn't care about what you want. You got to be with somebody who cares about what you want. But if she doesn't care about what you want, she's going to go do her own thing and she's not going to value you because you don't value yourself because you're staying with somebody that you shouldn't be with. And so it's incredibly important you get somebody who matches your value as well. So I hope you look at those green flags when you're dating somebody. I hope maybe you learn something about some red flags too. If you want a video on just the red flags, click here. This is the one that I did on just the red flags you should look out for when you're dating somebody. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like if you want to see more. And if you have a question or comment on something you'd like me to cover in the next video, comment below.